Today we're going to talk about membrane proteins, but before doing that we're going to need to have a closer look at the membranes, which is not a protein component of life, but still an exceptionally important player in molecular biophysics. So this is a somewhat long story. Already in the late 19th century, Overton made the observation that fat soluble compounds have a much easier time entering the roots of plants. And somehow that means that there must be walls or something in these cells that are full of fat or oil. And a few decades later, um, Gordon and uh, Grendel proposed that this was in fact small lipid bilayers. I'll show you some examples here. Um, this is from the late 1930s, which is probably the real physical hard evidence that cells, human cells, consist of this lipoid phase. Um, and this was Schmidt Beer and Ponder, who in 1938 made experiments with polarized lights on uh, red blood cells. And based on the scattering, they proposed that this was this lipid bilayer in human cells too. So the idea here is that you would have water out here, oil phase here, and then water on that side, which would effectively create a very permeable wall for some molecules, such as oxygen, important for red blood cells, while, for instance, water can't go through this, so that the cell would actually have an interior. This was confirmed in the early 1950s with electron microscopy, and electron microscopy actually gives us a chance to look at the structure of these membranes, so let's do that. Here is an example of an isolated cell, and I think it is in fact a red blood cell from uh, David Robertson's work in 1981. Do you see these two layers here? So you might think that that's the upper and lower layer of the lipid leaflets, and that's wrong. Um, so this in fact turns out to be two full layers of lipids. So this is one bilayer, and that is one bilayer. It's very common in cells that they have an outer layer and an inner layer, but that's possibly beyond the concept of this class. Bacteria, for instance, they might have a small cytoskeleton here with sugars and everything creating a somewhat rigid surface. Do you see here? This might be an easier time. Here we have one cell on the left and one cell on the right. And this is also an electron micrograph. Uh, and then we have magnified the part in the middle. Here too, you see two bilayers and each bilayer, so you have one bilayer in the left cell and one bilayer in the right cell. And we can't, can't quite see the atomic detail yet, but you see a very clear pattern of the bands here, right? The reason why we get those bands is that if we look at a lipid, some parts of the lipids are going to interact much stronger with electrons than others. I'll show you which ones in a second. So let's see if we could take this image and magnify just this part. What molecule would we eventually find inside it? This one. 